All right, we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first Ubuntu Community Team Q and A of 2015. It's going to be an exciting year for us, I think. So, uh, really looking forward to these. We do these every week on Tuesday at the same time at 1600 UTC. Um, if you're not watching on UbuntuOnAir.com, you should go there now because you'll have both the video as well as an embedded chat window where we take questions from people during the show. If you want to ask a question, just go to that chat window, type it in with the word QUESTION in all caps at the start. That way we see it and uh, it doesn't get lost in a bunch of text if there's a lot of discussion going on. So we usually start these out with uh, some updates about what's been going on, but uh, we've been on holiday for the last couple of weeks. So I don't know how much there is to bring up. Alan, what um, did you do when you did break? Anything fun? So, sorry, Mike? I was asking you what you did over the break. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, mostly uh, eating too much, drinking too much, uh, but spending lots of time playing with Lego and, you know, uh, constructing kids' toys and, you know, stuff like that. Basically, I spent the entire time. I had a week off before Christmas as well, so I've been away for three weeks. Um, and uh, I spent basically the whole time playing with toys and spending time with the family. So um, it's it's one of those things that, uh, you know, even though I work from home and I see the kids every day because, you know, <laughs> they're, they're here and I'm here, um, spending some quality time with them, you know, away from the computer, with you know, not with my back to them <laughs> is, uh, is, uh, is valuable. So, um, yeah. yeah. It was good. Yeah, I've noticed that too, that even though you are home all day, it doesn't mean you actually get to spend all that much time with the, the family while you're there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, my uh, my daughter was in a pantomime. I don't think I don't think you really have pantomime in the states, do you? No, not really. No. So for those people who are not in uh, in the UK, pantomime is a really bizarre thing where you go to see a theatrical production. It's often a fairy tale of some kind. This year it was Snow White. And, um, you know, certain things about pantomime, they, they often interact with the audience and you, they, get to, uh, they get you to shout. Sorry, my cat's just destroying the place. Um, they, they, uh, they get you to shout stuff out and get involved and sing along with them. And uh, it's really good fun. And uh, my daughter was in one this year. So uh, I spent a lot. I, I went to see it a couple of times. And, uh, yeah, it's good fun. So, um, yeah, it's nice getting away. Cool. Yeah, I didn't do a whole lot uh, on my break. Like you, ate and drank too much, spent a lot of time with the family. Uh, it was actually my uh, wedding anniversary last weekend also. So, oh, uh, wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, we went out to the beach because it's Florida, and you can do that the first week of January. <laughs> <laughs> I live in the wrong country. <laughs> So uh, I also uh, I spent some time working on my uh, personal Reddit app, which was nice. Got uh, quite a bit done on that. If anyone mm -hmm. follows me on Google+, Plus, you've been seeing all of the screenshots. Awesome. And that's all, that's all written in QML, isn't it? Yes, it is. There's a JavaScript library that um, was written actually for the Karma Machine app, which was one of the ones that was written for our first, I think, QML app dev con competition. So he relicensed the underlying library for that uh, as BSD so that I could use it in my app, which I thought was really nice of him, and has really helped me uh, add a lot of functionality without having to re-implement the wheel. That's awesome. We have, uh, it's funny because uh, I, I, over the Christmas period I was watching, uh, you know, watching social media and seeing, you know, how people, and also I was kind of watching my email inbox without actually reading the mail, uh, getting notifications on my phone of you know when email comes in, and I saw there were you know people really active both on mailing lists and you know creating merge proposals for the kind of community projects that I'm following, and uh, you know it, people were spending a fair amount of their uh, their Christmas period not away from their computer, you know whatever whatever floats your boat if you're you know bored and sick of Brussels sprouts and turkey at Christmas, then uh, it's nice to get away to the computer.
All right, so uh, once again, you can ask us any questions in the IRC. We uh, have the full hour and obviously not a lot of updates to talk about, so ask us anything about anything, and we will do our best to answer them. Uh, there is one update. I'm not sure how many people saw this, but uh, just before we went on holiday, some people got uh, notices about the upcoming BQ phones, when they're going to be available to go on sale, and uh, when people are going to be able to get some early access to that. So if you missed the, all those, in the first or second week of February, the BQ phones will go on sale. Those are going to be the first phones pre-installed with Ubuntu. Uh, and then we expect Maizu uh, sometime shortly after that. I don't know if you can still hear me. My, uh, my laptop has frozen up completely. I can hear you. Cool. Uh, am I, is the video still working or not? Yep. Oh, okay. It's just do this in the dark. Yeah, it's just the display. I just can't see anything. Um, yes. So um, one of the one of the interesting things I've noticed about the um, what you were just talking about the the announcement is that we haven't put any announcements on anywhere on Ubuntu.com. Um, so for example, someone dropped by the uh, one of the IRC channels earlier and was asking uh, when is the Ubuntu phone. Uh, going to be released, and I pointed to the OMG Ubuntu article, and uh, they were quizzing me, quizzing us a little bit as to you know why why is this not on the Ubuntu.com uh, website? And we've we've got a, a whole bunch of people who are uh, what we like to call insiders who are um, who are getting the inside track on on this information. So you know keep an eye out on sites like OMG Ubuntu and other places for for more information. All right, we've got some questions that have come in. First yeah, one from yeah. Nothing Much. Uh, regarding the Ubuntu Flyme OS that Maizu is marketing, is it still going to function exactly like stock Ubuntu phone OS? So I, I don't have a lot of uh, information on that, but from what I know, uh, the plan is that the different OEMs, so BQ and also Maizu, will add whatever additional scopes and apps that they want onto the phones before they ship them. And Maizu especially has done a lot of work building these custom things onto Android. And that's what they call a FlyMe OS. It's Android with some additional apps and services that they provide. So what I expect to happen is that those will get ported over onto Ubuntu. They'll probably have uh, a custom theme or, or something uh, just to distinguish their phones from other Ubuntu OS phones. But functionality-wise, it's going to be the same thing. So you'll still have, you know, the dash, which is where you'll get to your scopes, all the apps, you know, will work essentially the same. The launcher, the top bar, everything for Unity 8 will be the same. Uh, it's just the defaults that come pre-installed that are going to be different. Again, I don't have a lot of visibility on that. That's not my the part of the company that either Alan or I work in. Um, but for my understanding, that's what's most likely going to happen. And they'll just brand that as Ubuntu FlyMe to distinguish it from vanilla Ubuntu. Yeah, that's the way I understand it as well. It's not. It, there was some, wor some worries in the, the community that uh, Maizu were going to you know, make something completely different that wasn't Ubuntu on that phone. It would be some wacky hybrid. But uh, the way we understand it is... It's Ubuntu phone, the same as the image that you get on the Nexus 4 and you get on the BQ phone and other phones in the future, um, but with whatever level of customization on top of that that they want to uh, they want to add. And this is something that we work closely with uh, OEMs and carriers on when we were developing Unity 8 uh, over the past couple of years, is to make sure that they can customize it to the extent that they want to differentiate themselves from everybody else without them having to fork and create a separate version of all of it, which they currently do for uh, Android. So we've been working with them to make sure that they can do this on top of stock Ubuntu components and not have to fork it. So if we've done that right, then we're all good, and it's not going to be a separate OS. And I think we have. I think the the scopes, especially theming. If you look at some of the scopes that have come in from the app develop or from the scope development competition, uh, that have used the new theming capabilities and stuff, you really 
have a lot of flexibility in what you can do with those to brand them to your company or service or whatever. All right, moving on. Sid Payton asks, what is the status of the weather app? Haven't heard a bit from it for a long time. Alan, now I'll let you take that. Yeah, so to yesterday um, I got new designs for the weather app and uh, we're going to, we're having a meeting this week with uh, weather app developer and uh, anyone else who wants to get involved in development of the weather app can do um, and that will will um, we'll make that more publicly accessible a little bit later in the week um, and uh, yeah, there will be a full weather app redesign uh, under development very soon. And uh, not just weather, there's some other apps uh, that are getting redesigned, aren't there? I know uh, there's been some discussion about designs for Deco. Yeah, so the Deco developers have been working already on uh, the redesigns with uh, the canonical design team. Uh, we've had a few hangouts where we've gone over the designs that they've come up with, and uh, some of that's already been implemented. Um, I'm actually running um, a kind of bleeding edge version of Deco on my phone at the moment that has some of the the new features and new UI uh, changes that uh, that have been uh, implemented. It's not finished yet, but uh, it's um, it's looking really really good. Um, I think uh, I think Daniel's planning to update Deco in the store very shortly, possibly this week. So you'll see some of those changes in the uh, um, in the app. Um, one of the one of the notable changes is it's a lot faster now to switch between accounts. So, for example, if you have um, a personal email account and a work email account, you can switch between them nice and quickly uh, within the app. Um, and uh, the uh, the whole uh, flow of creating accounts, uh, if you if you have multiple accounts, or even if you just have one, uh, the the process for cr uh, creating those accounts on the device is a lot uh, a lot smoother and um, more pleasant. Oh, and the cool. the the view of the mail view is is better. I mean, it's just better in every way. But uh, it's not finished yet. But uh, yeah, you'll you should see an update in the store soon. I'm looking forward to that updated mail view. That's the one uh, rough edge that I've had. Mm. I've actually found setting up uh, multiple accounts remarkably easy on it because they've got that auto detection in there where you just kind of give it the email right. address and it picks out the right servers and stuff to use. Yeah, and that's you know obviously that's great if you're using a common provider like you know Gmail or Outlook or you know something like that. But uh, obviously there is a manual settings option as well. So if you have you know weird SMTP server settings or IMAP server settings, you can you can put those in as well. It's um, it caters for for all of those use cases. I've also uh, appreciated the Content Hub integration on that for uh, downloading and adding attachments. That's that works really well. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, it's one of those things that, you know, you probably, on a mobile device, you probably don't find yourself a attaching things to emails, you know, maybe other than photos, uh, very often. But it's one of those things, you know, when you're on the move, you just you just need it. It's one of those things you, you absolutely need to be able to do. And so having that feature in there is, uh, is really cool. Yeah, I've used it uh, sending pictures and email to my parents who don't have uh, Dropbox or, or anything like that. Right. Cool. All right. Moving along. Uh, Belkinza has a comment, not a question, that the next Ubuntu Online Summit dates are May 5th through the 7th. So uh, thank you, Belkinza, for reminding us to bring that up. It's an important thing. We're doing this twice a year. It's where we both plan the next release and also provide information and help new users get started on the current stable release. So if you have topics that you want to discuss or things that you want to plan out, that's the time where we all get together to do that. So you can start thinking about that now. Um, in the next month or so, we'll probably start updating summit.ubuntu.com to have a record for that, and you can start filing blueprints or adding sessions to that. There will be more information coming out on that uh, as we get closer to it. And of course, look for track leads, like I hope uh, Belkinza again to help you get those set up. Uh, I missed one going back. Chloe Wolfie Girl asks if there's any update on the porting guide. Uh, and 
I they, know they, go ahead. Sorry, uh, there was there was uh, uh, discussion about this towards the end of the end of the year, and um, I blanked out the porting guide page because it's basically completely wrong. Um, so for those who don't know, the whole the whole idea of the porting guide is a wiki page that you can, or some documentation that you can read if you have a device uh, that you'd like to port them onto. onto. Um, it goes through all the steps, and unfortunately, because we've made a number of fundamental infrastructural changes in the way the phone image is built, the porting guide is just wrong, and everyone has had their heads down, you know, trying to get the phone ready. That they haven't had time to go and look at the um, the porting guide. It hasn't been a high priority, um, and the people who could do that are you know the people who are super busy with other things. Um, right now, the people who would do that are currently still on vacation. Uh, when they're back, uh, we'll jump on them and see if we can organise um, the rewrite of that uh, that documentation. But at the moment, I don't have any update. Yeah, I think there was a discussion of this last uh, online summit, and everyone agreed that we needed an update for it. It was just a matter of finding somebody who could write it and who had the time to write it, and and had the experience of doing the porting. You know, because yeah, you, you kind of have to go through the motion in order to you know prove that it works. So you need a device, and there are certain you know attributes to that device that you need. You know, you need the um, AOSP source code, you need the drivers and all that kind of stuff, and it needs to be unlocked. And, and so there are certain device, you know, devices that the people who write the guide need to have to be able to write the guide. Um, otherwise, it's just as inaccurate as the current one. But I will jump on people when uh, they're back from vacation and let you know. Yeah. If you're interested in it, please keep reminding us and bugging us about it until we get it done. Mm hmm Right. Uh, Chloe Wolfie Girl again is asking, uh, are you two going to make an amazing promo for Ubuntu Touch? Because I feel that I need that in my life. <laughs> uh, I'm sure somebody with some video skills is going to make a promo video uh, of Ubuntu on phones. I certainly wouldn't describe anything I make as an amazing promo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I think the chances of an amazing promo coming from us is probably not that high. Yeah. Uh, I... Uh, but in general, um, I don't know. I don't know if we're um, creating some marketing video that's you know not within our our realm. Um, I, I the person who I think will probably do the best at uh, this kind of thing is Joey OMG Ubuntu. I think if anyone's going to do a video uh, about it, it will probably be him. I'm not asking him to do that, uh, but. I would anticipate it's strongly it hinting be. that it would be a very welcome video. <laughs> yeah, it would be really, really nice, Joey. Uh, <laughs> everyone, everyone should uh, tweet at uh, Joey and ask him to make one. <laughs> so what's his Twitter? It's at dude, D-0-O-D? Yeah, D-0-O-D. Yeah. All right, so everybody tweet him and ask him for that awesome video. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Joey. Uh, and Sheil asks, what new features or functionality is planned for Ubuntu on the desktop and laptop? So the big one, of course, is Unity 8. Uh, there's some videos floating out there now uh, of Unity 8 running on the desktop with you know, desktop-style windows that you would expect. There's going to be a lot of work to build the features that we already have in Unity 7, all the keyboard shortcuts and mouse uh, interactions that we have for Unity 7 still need to be built into Unity 8. So there's a lot of work just to get us back to where we are in terms of functionality, but uh, the new code base, the new scopes, the new store and click apps and all of that uh, will be coming once we get Unity 8 on there. So that's the big, big feature that's coming soon. Uh, until then, I don't know of any uh, plans that are going on. You could jump into hash Ubuntu-Unity and ask the developers there. I know they're always doing bug fixes and optimizations and stuff like that. Uh, in 1404, we had quite a few new features land, like uh, locally integrated menus, uh, high DPI support, various other things. So there may be stuff planned on top of Unity 7 still uh, in the coming release or two. Yep. It probably would be good for us to... Uh... Uh, forward some of these questions on to uh, people like uh, Stephen 
and uh, Kevin and uh, bring those answers to this maybe next week or something like that. Yeah, maybe we can get one of them on. That would yep. be nice. Yep. All right. Chloe again, without having to buy an Android phone, will there be a phone which would have stock Ubuntu on it? You mean stock Ubuntu without any uh, OEM modifications, I guess. Uh, because yeah, if that's what you're that, asking, my yeah. guess would be no. Right. But, because we're going to have, you know, we've got these two partners already, and I think they both have some custom scopes that they want to use. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing stopping you building your own image that doesn't have those. Um, and I think you can probably remove some of that stuff if you want to. You know, it's it the Ubuntu phone platform is surprisingly hackable in you know what you can hack out of it and add on to it and. Uh, and so on. Um, we also create vanilla images. I don't know if the vanilla images uh, will be published. I don't know is the short answer. Yeah, I don't know either. But remember that the the difference between stock Ubuntu and uh, an OEM customized Ubuntu is going to be significantly less than stock Android and a customized Android because it was designed to just add this layer of customization on top of it without changing any of the actual vanilla Ubuntu stuff. So right. instead of thinking it as you know a fork of Ubuntu or a customized version of Ubuntu, just think of it as Ubuntu plus pre-installed. That's really all it's going to be. All right, Sid Payton, will the contact scope return soon? That I don't know. Huh. That's a good question. I remember that, and there was a problem with that, because when you sync uh, contacts from Google and you had hundreds of contacts, like some of us did, um, it really slowed down the dash trying to get all those displayed on there. Now, of course, this was at least a year ago, probably more than that, when we had the contact scope. So there have been a lot of API improvements to the Dash since then. It may be possible to implement it efficiently now. I don't know. You could give it a try. I think you can get all that information uh, from Evolution Data Server. I don't know if the App Armor profile will let you have access to all of that or not, but it's worth a try. And you could always go look at the old code, because it probably has uh, how to do that in there. All right, just crack us. What is the status of the web version of the store? So we need to get Martin Albacetti on one of these to discuss that. It comes up quite a bit. And I know his team has been working on it, but I have no idea when it will be available or what the progress is right now. Alan, do you, have you heard anything on that? Uh, no, the question came up on Google Plus uh, over the weekend, actually, because uh, as a community guy who has created um, his own web front end um, and his name escapes me. I think it might be Brian Douglas uh, who has created a, a web front end to our store um, and the question came up when's the official one going to be made um, and um, yeah, it's, it's on the roadmap but I don't know uh, where on the roadmap it is at the moment. So if you're <laughs> curious about that you can go poke um... Martin on IRC. I just typed his uh, IRC nick into the chat there. You can usually find him on Hash Ubuntu Touch uh, or Hash Ubuntu Dash App Dash Devel. He may still be on vacation. A lot of people took extended uh, vacation and are not back until next week. No, he's back. I had a conversation with him today. Well, that doesn't mean he's back. <laughs> you know how canonical people are. <laughs> True. All right, um, let's see, next one is from Chloe. Uh, I've seen some screenshots of a native Telegram app. Any idea when that'll get pushed out? I heard that it should be pushed before the launch of Ubuntu Phone. Um, I don't know when it'll be pushed out. I don't think it's tied to the launch of a phone. Uh, there's a project on Launchpad for it. I think it's launchpad.net slash Ubuntu hyphen Telegram. Uh, so if you're interested, the source code's there. You can try it out yourself. Um, there's an IRC channel also, which is also, I think, hash Ubuntu-Telegram, uh, and they can help you with it. 
there's a few. There's a there's a couple in the store. There's a Webogram and there's another one. I think there's uh, there's three or four implementations. Yeah. So it's if you want to use Telegram on the phone, there's there's plenty of options for you there. Right. Webogram actually works really really well on the phone. Yeah, it does. Uh, right. Same uh, topic from MS Abused. I love the Nick. Uh, any news on an open source chat client? Heard some rumors about Tox.im, which is, I think, the Tor-based messaging client. Uh, I don't know if it's Tor-based, but it's you know encryption. Um, uh, it's it's seen as an you know secure and encryption related, rather than you know open free for all type thing. Um, yeah, I've seen people talk about it, but I have not seen anyone develop it. Um, so I don't know. I've not seen I've not seen any uh, anyone working on that. I know there is a Qt Tox client, but I don't know whether it's portable. I have heard uh, some discussion about putting together a, a messaging framework in Ubuntu uh, for people who are building messaging apps to to give them the the features that all messaging apps kind of have in common. Yeah, it kind of makes sense for us to, um, you know, have a plug-in system and have all the messaging in one place, rather than having, uh, you know, one app for one thing, another app for another thing. It kind of makes more sense to have it all, you know, together in one place. Uh, some uh, previous phones did that. I think the, no the Nokia N900 and the N9 Mego-based devices had like a centralized messaging hub. The Nokia N9 did everything. It seems. <laughs> Yeah, it was like the perfect phone. Yeah. It's going to be like the Amiga of phones that everyone says, oh, it had this years ahead of everyone else. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, if if someone's interested in that, it would be good to start a thread on the Ubuntu phone mailing list. I know other people have had success in saying, look, I'm interested in doing something, uh, whatever that might be, and then mentioning on the mailing list and gathering up a few people who work on that together. I know Daniel Holm has been looking at um, OwnCloud, for example, an OwnCloud app and authentication plugin and so on. Uh, and that all kicked off because of a discussion on the Ubuntu phone mailing list. So if you are interested in um, uh, you know, creating a, a messaging app of some kind or a plugin for some messaging system or, you know, a, a specific app for a particular messaging system, then it's probably a good idea to, to discuss it on the Ubuntu phone mailing list, partly because um, other developers are there and you might be able to get other people to help you, but equally um, the platform developers are there. So if there are any you know plans in mind that haven't coalesced to become code yet, um, they can point you in the right direction. So if there is, you know, some skeleton of code of a messaging framework or something that someone's been working on, then it would make sense to pull those people together so that you can work on something collaboratively rather than, you know, five people all creating separate messaging apps. It would be good to kind of bring those people together. All right, let's see what's next. Uh, just Caracas, will one of you buy an Ubuntu phone when they come out? What do you expect of the sales? Yes, so, I will buy one. Yes. So uh, I, I probably will not buy one uh, <gasps> for one specific reason, and that's because the the BQ phone, from what I've read about the model, is not going to support the frequencies that we have over here in the U.S. because we're odd and we bet on all the wrong technology, <laughs> and so we can't use the same phones as the rest of the world. Well, so unfortunately, that that wouldn't work really well for me. I would not be able to get 3G or 4G data from it. Right. So uh, just to be clear, I don't think it's that it wouldn't work at all in the US. It would work on certain networks and um, you know, you could, it will work on Wi-Fi, for example. But yeah, it it'll work on Wi-Fi. On... It'll work for voice calling. And I believe it will work for up to 2G data. Right. Uh, but it will not work for 3G or above data in the U.S. Sucks to be you, my friend. Sucks it does, to be you. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang on to my Nexus 4 a little bit longer until we get a, a phone that will work over here. I would love a phone that works on Verizon because they've got the best coverage over here, but 
that's even harder than getting one that works in the U.S. at all because they use CDMA for uh, 3G and nobody so else. I think the, the interesting thing here is, you know, not to view the first phone that we put out as the you know the ultimate panacea that's going to you know wipe out all other phone competitors. It's the first phone, and there it's a stepping stone towards wiping out all those others. But it is only the first step. So I you know while it must be frustrating if you live in a region that's not served well by the first device. I wouldn't be too bummed out because there's going to be other phones coming down the line, uh, which are going to service that need. Right, and we are we are still in discussions with uh, different OEMs and different carriers uh, to expand it beyond the two that we already have working with us on that. So mm -hmm. there will be more phones coming after these two. Uh, this is just you know the the getting the foot in the door, so to speak. Cool. All right, nothing much, says he saw on G+, an article about Android 4.4 not being a good multitasker. Did Android 5 fix some of these issues, or it wasn't tested yet as a desktop OS? So that was me, and I based my article on uh, KitKat running on a 2012 Nexus 7. Um, I have heard that Android 5 fixes some of the issues that I had. I haven't been able to test it yet because my uh, tablet hasn't popped up saying that Android 5 is ready for it yet. So when it is, I'll try it. Uh, it sounds like at least some of the problems were fixed, but I don't know how. I think in order to fix them properly, they would have to drastically change the way Android handles activities. Um, and maybe they have. Uh, I will give them the benefit of the doubt until I actually try it. Maybe they have done all of that heavy work to, to do it right. Uh, so we'll see. I've uh, I've got uh, um, Android 5 running on my Nexus 7 2012 here, and it's quite painfully slow. Um, I I find uh, so actually mine just sits. Uh, this is why I keep looking that way because my my uh, Nexus 7 2012 is just an IRC notifier, so it just sits on my desk showing me IRC all the time. So I don't know if you can see that, but that's just. Every, every person who's asked the questions is on my little Nexus 7, and that's the only thing I use it for. Because it's too slow for anything else. That's why you need an Android watch. You can get uh, pings on your wrist all day long. Right, yeah. It'd be really useful doing that all the time. <laughs> yeah. Rather than Wouldn't just be annoying at all. No, no, no. Okay. Next question uh, from Nakanut. As Samsung have revealed a 4K TV running Tizen, do you feel Ubuntu has missed the boat for OS-powered TVs? Well, that's interesting. No, I don't, I don't think because you could have you could have asked the same question three years ago when you know Google announced uh, Google TV or Apple announced Apple TV. Have we missed the boat there? And people are still developing. OSs for TV, new OSs for TVs. So no, I don't think we have because people will, companies will continue to develop uh, new OSs for TVs and new things to go on their smart TVs. I don't, I don't think we've, you know, I don't think it's the case that Samsung are, rele are releasing Tizen for TVs. Therefore, everyone needs to shut up shop and stop developing operating systems or TV-based platforms. I don't think that's the case at all. No. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think that boat has been actually determined yet. I think a lot of people are making smart TVs that really aren't gaining traction. Uh, a lot of them because they've just tried to take a, a phone and throw it up on a TV and say, now you have apps on your TV uh, that you control with a little remote from the couch, and that just hasn't worked out well. Uh, so I see this kind of as like the pre iPhone days of phones. Um, you know, we had Linux-powered phones before iPhone came out. The Motorola Razr, I think, was Linux-powered, and they all had some variety of apps that you can use, but nobody actually quite figured out how to make the smartphone experience people wanted until Apple came out with the iPhone. 
And I don't think we've reached that point yet with TVs. I don't think anyone's figured out yet how to make a smart TV that people enjoy using. And the other thing is, one of the one of the problems with the TV manufacturers is they they fire and forget. They throw it over the wall. They put a TV in a store, and then you never get any updates for it. And so you're left with a with a TV that's got apps on it, baked in apps for video platforms that have since died, or uh, you know, um, content delivery systems that have been bought by other companies, and you're left with an orphaned application with no content in it and no no way to update it or remove it. Um, I think that's getting, and that's that, yeah, that's the equivalent as Mike was saying with phones from the past, like the old Symbian, the old Symbian phones, where there was just a bunch of baked in apps and you couldn't install very much. Then a store came along, and then it became easier to add apps. I think I think we're starting to get to the point where. You need, uh, you know, a ubiquitous OS for TVs that can get updates. You know, after the after the TV is shipped. At the moment, the motivation for TV manufacturers to continue maintaining the software on their TVs is none. There's no revenue stream from for most people from the con- the TV consumer, TV user, back to the TV manufacturer. There's no motivation for them to update the software, um, and I think that needs to change. Maybe it will be with Tizen. Maybe something else. And I, I also want to point out that it's not just software that uh, they're doing this with. I mean, a year or two ago, everything was 3D TVs. Everybody was going 3D. 3D was the future. Uh, and now that's more or less been abandoned because nobody could figure out how to do it in a way that people actually liked. Yeah, 3D TV sucks. Same as curved TVs are the new thing, which is just ridiculous, having a curved TV. I just can't fathom why you would want a curved TV, but anyway. Um, and then the next thing is going to be 4K, then 5K, 6K, 8K. So I don't know. So bring it all back around. Yeah, I don't think uh, we've missed the boat on that yet. I don't think that boat is ready to sail just yet. So we'll see. Maybe... Uh... Maybe we'll be on it when uh, it's ready. Okay, what's next? Uh, Chloe says, uh, "What companies pushing out with companies pushing out watches, and with no Ubuntu watches planned currently, are there any plans to work with Mozilla or Google to get Ubuntu Touch to work with Firefox OS watches, and/or Android watches?" Not that I'm no. aware of. No, not that I'm aware of either. So both of them are going to have to work with other platforms. I mean, you can't put out a Firefox OS watch that's not going to let you plug it into a Windows box and manage it somehow. Or, or do it over Wi-Fi or something. So whatever they do for supporting Windows and OS X, um, I'm going to go ahead and hope that this is an open and public API that they use so that somebody can write an app for Ubuntu that will let you manage it also. Something like MTP for phones, something that's common and standard uh, that we can implement. All right, Sid Payton says, I want to use Ubuntu Touch as my daily driver. One thing that keeps me away from it is I don't get my mails pushed to my phone. Will it be possible to have something like a watchdog installed on my own server which pushes to an Ubuntu software part which gets the Gmail emails? So you can turn on uh, notifications for Gmail uh, on Ubuntu Touch right now. If you add a Gmail account, you can enable that. Um, you can, yeah, if you wanted to run your own server that would use our push notifications, you can do that uh, for anything you want. Currently, Gmail, we have a daemon running on the phone that will periodically check for new emails. Uh, we've discussed having a, a third server that would use proper push notifications for that, uh, but that would require you giving your credentials over to somebody else, and uh, we decided that wasn't a good idea. But if you want to run your own server that does it, uh, there's documentation on the developer portal on uh, the API for push notifications. So if somebody wanted to write something that would do that, they can. Yeah, we've been talking about how, how to do that for Deco, uh, the email client. And uh, yeah, we're, we're currently still thinking about the best way to do that. I actually turned off email notifications on my phone because I got too many of them. It would just light up all the time with uh, merge uh, email notifications. Yeah, all these developers who keep writing yeah. code, how dare they? 
It's that you know, it's that uh, Ricardo Padovani. He keeps yeah. uh, moving through the holidays and everything, creating merge yeah. proposals. I think I think Ricardo is just an elaborate bot that's developing. <laughs> But he is a very well dressed bot, I'll give him that. <laughs> yes. All right. So we've got uh, 15 minutes left. Uh, if you've got any more questions, you have left. It's like quite a bit. Uh, right, nothing much. Will Click Packages be available on the desktop? So I mentioned this earlier. Click Packages will be available on the desktop when Unity 8 is available on the desktop. Uh, in order to safely provide click packages to users, we need to have proper confinement, and we cannot have that with X11. So you have to wait for Mirror and Unity 8 to be on the desktop before we'll start uh, making it easy to download and install click packages on the desktop. But it is coming. The best says, do you know how the Unity 8 scopes will work on the desktop and the TV? Um, Functionality-wise, the same as they do on the phone. Uh, as far as what the UI and UX will be like, uh, I don't think that's been determined yet. TV is probably not going to be worked out uh, anytime real soon. Desktop's going to have to be worked out pretty soon, though. So we should hopefully see some uh, design work on that coming out. I think it's also worth uh, pointing out that, that it's probably better not to think of things in terms of desktop TV phone, but think of how Unity works on um, a, a low-resolution a, a low device in portrait uh, with no keyboard and mouse, or how it works on a device that is f very large, you know, 42 inches, but has a keyboard and mouse, or one that doesn't have a keyboard or mouse, or one that has a remote, rather than thinking of these very constrained phone desktop TV, because the lines are getting blurred between them. It's not so much, does this work on a phone, does this work on a TV, does this work on a desktop? It's more, you know, does it work with a pointing device? Does it work with a keyboard? Does it work with a remote? Does it work on a very high resolution display? Does it work on a high DPI display? And that kind of thing. And I think that's where our focus is, is better put, is making sure that our frameworks and our applications work in all of these use cases rather than on specific devices. So for example, a, a tablet can become a laptop. A laptop can become a TV if you plug in a big screen, uh, rather than thinking in terms of very constrained uses. Right. And we've designed the, the UI toolkit and the underlying Ubuntu uh, infrastructure to think more along the lines of hardware capabilities instead of having some predefined form factor names. Mm -hmm. All right, the best asks, what is the prog how is the progress on Ubuntu for TV? So there hasn't been any progress on that for a couple of years now. Uh, we developed a prototype. We showed it to a bunch of manufacturers. Uh, nobody was ready to, to jump on that yet uh, for, for the reasons we mentioned earlier. Everybody's still trying to figure out what a smart TV is. So we, ha we we switched gears uh, to phones. That was a known uh, model. People wanted an Ubuntu phone. People wanted to ship an Ubuntu phone. So we put all of our energy the past couple of years into that. Uh, Ubuntu TV has not been canceled, though. It's ready to come back as soon as we know what direction it needs to go, and we have partners who want to help drive it to market. All right, next one is from Sid Payton. What happened to the new Ubuntu icon design on the desktop? Back in March, everybody hoped it will make it still in 14.04. Since then, I haven't heard anything about it. I actually haven't been keeping up with that. Alan, have you? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going on with uh, icon design and desktop. Um, seems like we need a, a desktop catch-up session maybe next week with... Uh, with um, maybe Will or someone else from the uh, from the desktop team. Maybe we could get yeah. a couple of them. Maybe, uh, we've got maybe, a, we've got a, uh, a bunch of desktop-related questions that keep coming up, so um, we should get them on. All right. Try and get through the rest of these as quickly as we can. Uh, Sid Payton, will the browser get the bottom edge gesture like we could see in the example videos from the design team, or is that axed for some reason? I haven't heard about it being axed, and I certainly want it to uh, come along. So I'm hoping we'll see it soon. 
Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, I've said I don't know a lot today. That's not good. Well, we, we just to, came uh, back from vacation. I, I think that's allowed. <laughs> Literally two days into being back at work. Cool. All right. Uh, the Frenchman asks why Ubuntu don't have native jack plugin. In my car, my radio has a mini jack plug. It would be very useful to users as developers to have a clean and easy jack indoor. So I'm assuming he's talking about the, the audio uh, server jack, uh, which I've heard is used a lot in like recording studios or, or complex setups. Um, I have no idea why it's not used other than the fact that we use Pulse Audio and it works well and uh, is pretty simple. Again, a question for the desktop team, I think. Right, MS abused. I'm missing push service for the mail client. Any plans for that? Again, it's there for Gmail right now. Unfortunately, it's hard-coded to use the Gmail web app, so if you click on one of the notifications, it will open it in that instead of Deco. Uh, there is discussion on what can be done about that. Chloe, Wolfie Girl, will M Hall move to the UK so he can use the phone? No, I will not. I am deathly allergic to snow. <laughs> we don't have snow. That's Finland. Finland has snow. Finland has they've, snow. They've minus 15 there. It's uh, you, fine. I, I, I've seen the Christmas Carol. You guys get snow. Yeah, not very often. Not enough. <laughs> you know, we get like two centimeters of snow. That's an inch, Mike. Yeah. And. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, the whole country sh shuts down. So uh, now, yeah, the, you, know, you don't want that. The actual reason I could never move to the UK is because my concept of tea and biscuits would uh, get me hanged. <laughs> also, the metric system. Yeah, that metric system too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Sid Payton. How's everyone's battery life on Ubuntu Touch compared to Android? I heard that someone had better life for Ubuntu Touch while I have the opposite result, unfortunately. Hmm. I really don't have anything to compare it to because I booted Android on my Nexus 4 just long enough to enable developer mode so that I could flash Ubuntu on it. So I have no idea what the original battery life was. Um, I could easily go a full day on my battery, though. Um, it's less than it used to be. I've been using it for a year and a half now. Um, so I think the battery is starting to wear out. I used to be able to get almost two full days uh, on a charge. So either I'm using it more now or the battery is wearing out. One of the two. Is that <laughs> you were getting two days when you know nothing worked and uh, you couldn't actually use the device? <laughs> actually, there, there was a period of time back in uh, late 2013 where I would get like half a day just because some driver quirk was running in the background at 100% CPU all the time. So it's improved quite a bit since then. So I'm looking at my phone, and it dropped 30% between... Um, oh, gosh, what's that? 4, 3, 2, no, 4... One. About midnight last night and about 10 o'clock this morning. So in 10 hours, it lost about 30%. So I'm guessing it wasn't doing a lot during that time. I would say it's roughly comparable to Android. Mm. I have heard that the Nexus 5 port is not as good battery-wise as Android, but that may be something specific to the drivers that they have to use. Could be. All right, moving right along. NS Shiel, how much discussion was there been getting Ubuntu to work with all the new hardware, watches, Chromecast, etc. Not a whole lot. Our focus has been on the Nexus devices and the BQ and Maizu devices. That's been our really our exclusive focus. I know some people in Canonical are using and maybe contributing to the Nexus 5 port, but that's on their own personal time. That's not something that Canonical is pushing forward. Jorik, will an Ubuntu phone you buy somewhere this year gain the convergence function when that is released? Um, probably not, given that I don't think the devices, the initial devices, have the ability to plug in 
HDMI and USB devices at the same time. So uh, prob- uh, probably not, I would think. And even if they did, I don't think the uh, desktop Unity 8 is really going to be ready to be something we want to promote regular use of. It's it's early development right now for the desktop features. Um, well, his question specifically says, will an Ubuntu phone you buy this year gain convergence when that's released? Oh. So I, I'm I'm guessing that means will it will it will it go back to previous phones? It probably will. I mean, our plan is to keep all the phones up to date with the latest Ubuntu. So right. Well, software-wise, yeah, but it depends if the device is capable yeah. of it. And I, and, I, and I don't think the BQ1 is capable of HDMI and US, USB, but I, I may be wrong on that. I'm not it suggesting. may require a special dock or something. Mm-hmm. All right, well, we'll wait and see on that. All right, uh, Chloe, what features are planned with Ubuntu Convergence? If you have a phone and a desktop and or TV, how will they interact with each other? Uh, I think we're still working all of that out. Um, we, we've got some ideas of how it'll work converging between a phone and a desktop. Uh, we've got some preliminary ideas of how it'll work from phone to TV, uh, but a lot of that's still up in the air, and a lot of it's going to grow organically um, as we provide the functionality behind it. We'll see what people use that for uh, and how that's expanded by people in the community and go from there. I think it makes sense. I mean... I know this sounds really flippant and vague, but it it makes sense for it the you know for it to do what you expect it to do. You know the the phone if you plug in a keyboard and mouse and a, a big display, it should become a desktop. You know if you plug in a you know forty two inch display and no keyboard and mouse, perhaps it becomes a TV. You know a video playback device. So I think I think the, the the short answer is it should do the right thing. In, in all of those scenarios, whether it's plugging in t- a keyboard and mouse or plugging in a display or um, sliding a phone into a bigger piece of glass to turn a phone into a tablet form factor, that kind of thing. I think it should just do the right thing. That's that's the ultimate goal. Yeah, I think it's what is the right thing is the, the details that need to be worked out. Whatever you think the right thing is, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, NS Shield is Ubuntu tested with emulator hardware, mirror with VMware uh, VirtualBox. I'm pretty sure it'll work with VMware. I think at one point there was a driver issue with VirtualBox that prevented it from working there. Uh, that I think may that's have still been the case. Resolved. No, I think that's still the case. I don't. I don't think it's working under VirtualBox, but I think it is working under VMware. I I'm willing to be proved wrong, but we could ask the guys when we get them on. And of course, the uh, phone emulator itself will run it. All right, Nakanut, do you know if the proposed first BQ phone will be unlocked? Um, if you mean carrier unlocked, I think all of BQ's phones are carrier unlocked. I don't think they sell any through carriers. I could be wrong. They might sell them sell them through some local carriers. Um, but I think the plan is to have them available online, uh, separate from carriers. Is that all of our questions? I think it is. I think so. All right, just in time, too. Awesome. That worked out well. (laughs) All right, well, thank you, everybody, for coming, and thank you for all of these great questions. We are excited to be back for a new year, and it is certainly going to be... uh, a fast-paced new year, I think. Yeah, it's going to be a busy one. We will be back again next week, same time, same channel. Uh, Maybe not the same people. It may be uh, some other people from the community team, and we will try and get some, uh, some folks from the desktop team to come answer some questions also. So join us again next week. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Ubuntu On Air or uh, watch previously recorded videos on YouTube. Uh, from the Ubuntu On Air channel, uh, both the community team Q&As and a bunch of others that we do regularly are hosted there. So you can go back and watch those. And we will see you all next week. Thank you. See you next week. Bye. Bye.